I am so excited about this next guest. She's an author who self-published her own book. She's a mogul. She's an awesome woman. She empowers young women and women throughout the business. Y'all give it up for Shanti <laughs> I'm so excited about you, Shanti. Thank you. This young lady, oh my God, we've known each other for many, many years. I knew her when she was like, right. <laughs> me high <laughs> Born and raised in the A. Yep. You went to Peyton Forest Elementary. I did. Southwest Middle School. Yep. Benjamin Mays High School. Raiders in the house. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about growing up here in Atlanta. Did you know that you would be doing what you're doing now? Well, um, yeah, I think so. I, I was always a fan of music. Mm -hmm. And when I was little, I remember listening to, gosh, the radio station. I think it was AOK. -okay. Girl. And there was a club <laughs> called a San Susi. Yes. And so I had to have my cassette. Right. tape ready so that I could tape all the stuff and so I just fell in love with music early on mm -hmm. and got a chance to go to concerts and so I started interning kind of like shadowing mm -hmm. and interning a couple of days a week at V103. My sister's friend was the program director there. Okay what one was this? Uh, this year? was like in the gosh early 80s maybe. Okay. Um, Ray Boyd was the program director okay. and I was like in middle school or high school. Wow. And uh, I remember he got me a backstage pass for my first concert which was um, Luther Vandross and Anita Baker <laughs> at the Omni, at the Omni. <laughs> and I was just in awe of what was going on backstage yeah. I really didn't I was like okay Anita's over there that's cool but like I like what everybody else is doing back here like right. that is what really mm -hmm. intrigued me I was like it's real movers and shakers back yes. here I was like and I knew I couldn't sing so I was like I want to be one of those people <laughs> right. and so yeah you know it kind of snowballed after but that. you've always had like a hustle and a grind um, Shanti, I remember seeing you at LaFace, just grinding it out. Mm -hmm. And you work with so many artists at LaFace. Um, tell me who influenced you the most? What artists did you say you felt like a personal connection to and, and you wanted to say it was more than just a job for you? Um, well, the one thing I'll say about LaFace Records mm -hmm. is in my former co-worker KP is in the KP. house. You guys will hear from him <laughs> next. You know, we worked like a family. Yes. And that's what I appreciated about the label. Mm -hmm. Not just, you know, our the staff there, but the artists as well. You know, we mm -hmm. would work during the day and then hang out, go to dinner, go to scary houses, you know, go to their right. birthday parties. And so it was just a different time in the industry where yes. we really moved and worked like a family. Mm -hmm. But um, I probably think I resonate the most with Outkast, and that's okay. probably because I spent the most time with them. Although I love Usher to Pieces, I was there very early on in his career. You know, not the new stuff, but mm -hmm. and TLC, of course. Mm -hmm. But Outkast and I—I I mean, we spent so much time together on the road, and I can—I have fond memories of being out on tour with them, going to like every oh, hole cool. in the wall club, and you know, getting a lot done. <laughs> you know with about those, those hole in the walls. <laughs> and they're like my, you know, brothers now. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, let everybody know what you did at LaFace Records. Well, so I attended Syracuse University yes. and majored in television, radio, and film. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the SI Newhouse School of Communication, okay. which was really exciting to have graduated from Newhouse. And I thought I wanted to be a radio announcer. So while I was at Syracuse, I actually did radio. But and I started making connections, you know, guys, network, network, yes. network. It's, it's all yes. about making connections while you're in college. And mm -hmm. being in a market like Atlanta mm -hmm. and having the ability um, to go to college here, you guys really have an advantage, I think, over most people because there's so much that goes on now, here. So for me, this. you know, while I was in college, I started interning at Capitol Records. Okay. And I did that for two summers. So the gentleman that hired me at Capitol began consulting at LaFace. And so I got hired as promotions director straight out of Syracuse and I was like well I don't know what a promotion director is but, <laughs> but I'm gonna figure this out but I'm gonna figure this out <laughs> and so you know I took the interview and ended up getting the job you know God is good and good. so jumped in head first and I was hired to actually go out and promote the music on the right. streets so back then you know we had 12 inches and cassette yes. tapes and I was the chick taking the records to the clubs you know and it was a very male dominated industry mm -hmm. but I put my hat on and you know, I kind of, this has kind of been a uniform for me. Although I have my moments. You know, oh, I've, my, I've seen my girly girl slide. moments. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was going to the clubs, whether it was strip clubs or regular clubs, and taking the music to the GJs, getting it played, mm -hmm. setting up promotional tours for the artists. Um, any kind of, you know, we did hand to hand. We didn't have the internet back then. Right. You know, so it was hand to hand distribution of postcards and flyers and poster boards and creating mm -hmm. all the POP that you would see at retail. Mm -hmm. and, 
setting up in stores, you know, when the albums were released and, you know, anything and everything, t-shirts, you know, right. I have some very iconic uh, promo items that yes. I made during the LaFace days. So I did all of that. I loved all the stuff you guys did at LaFace. I remember all of them. I enjoy every piece of promo that came and out. And I think the, the blessing and the cool part of working at a boutique label was, you know, you got to have your hands in a lot of different right. things. I actually, you know, went on video shoots and, mm -hmm. you know, would give my input on which, um, you know, fashion stylists we would hire for mm -hmm. the video shoots or the photo shoots and that sort of thing. So boutique labels kind of allow you and afford you that opportunity to kind of have your hand in a couple different things because we work so closely together. And it wasn't about egos. It wasn't as political when I started getting to the larger yes. record companies. You know, you can't it's step different. on people's it's toes. Different. and If you do marketing, then, you know, stay in your lane. Right. But at LaFace, you know, everybody yeah, kind of it it's like if you yeah. got the connect and you got the relationship, mm -hmm. make it happen. Make it and happen. so that's what we did at LaFace. Yeah. And by touring and getting on the road, you know, I was able to create relationships with program directors and music directors all across the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though I was doing promotions, it wasn't quite radio promotions because we were partnered with Arista Records and they were the ones that were getting our music played. Mm -hmm. But I was able to pull ads sometimes just on my relationships because I looked out for those people while I was on the relationships road. Relationships are everything. Everything. It's everything. who you know. Yes. A lot in this industry. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, speak to... You being a woman in this business, like you said, it's very male dominated. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel that you maintain your integrity throughout your journey? Because I'm sure wow. you're a beautiful sister. Thank you. So I know you got tried <laughs> a lot, I'm sure. Thank you. Um, you know, it was so many beautiful women, you know, that worked around me, yeah. you know, and in the industry, a lot of my colleagues. I think for me, um, because I was a sneakerhead at Syracuse, mm -hmm. and I started, I met Jermaine Dupree when I was high, in high school, and he was just starting with Silk Times Leather and Crisscross, and so I just kind of turned into this little hood chick. <laughs> Sorry to say that, but you know, I was you know, wearing my hat to the back and my yeah. jeans backwards, and so I was like, you know what, this kind of works for me, because I started becoming everybody's little sister. Gotcha. And so once I got in the industry, and I'm not telling ladies, like, I don't want people to think, like, you got to wear baggy clothes to be accepted right. and appreciated and respected. But that was what worked for me. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of diverted the attention. And so by the time I, you know, started coming into my womanhood and wearing mm -hmm. my little midriff shirts, <laughs> I had a flat stomach back then. <laughs> Um, you know, I could do that because the respect was already there. Yes. And so <clears throat> even when I would deal with like advances for men in the industry, because it happened a lot, a lot, yeah, whether it, it was the artists or yeah. people that I worked with, yeah. um, you know, I just never let that change who I was. And mm -hmm. anybody that I dated, because I'd be a hypocrite if I sat here and said I never dated anybody in the entertainment the industry. industry. Right. I did that. I you mean, know, it's a very social around. industry. That's, that's who we're around yeah. all the time. But it was on my terms. Mm -hmm. And I didn't sleep my way to the top. Mm -hmm. and, and if I dated you, it wasn't because I wanted any, anything from you other than your friendship and that right. I liked you. But I let my work speak for itself. Right. And that's what created the re reputation that I have today. It's, pow it's powerful. You did an awesome job because you had so much respect. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my beautiful sis over here got a Twitter question, I'm sure. Okay. Yes. So if you were to ask me that question probably 20 years ago, or maybe 15 years ago, mm -hmm. I would say not as much. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was at the Revolt Music Conference a couple of weeks ago, and I got to hear Jimmy Iovine speak. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, which I thought really resonated with me, that, you know, we have to stop looking at it as the music business and look at it as the business of music. That's true. And more so now, you know, the um, revenue streams have changed. Yes. You know, artists don't really make money off, mm -hmm. um, you know, royalties anymore. And I'm sure KP will get into that a yes. lot. And so now I, you know, I'm so glad that I can fall back if I need to by having my college degree. Mm -hmm. And I think it's even more important. And particularly, I'll tell you guys, um, from a marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. if you want to do marketing in the mm -hmm. entertainment industry, learn how marketing works on the corporate side. You know, even think about getting an MBA, because when you look at all these relationships, like the Samsung partnership with Jay-Z and, yes. you know, even going into the sports world, you know, LeBron and Sprite, you know, all these artists were looking for new opportunities and ways to market our artists. And Jay-Z's album actually came out, you know, through right. a mobile phone. Right. And so you have to understand the, the culture and um, the language of how you do business on the corporate side. And so I would say it's very important nowadays. Very important, very important. Um, I want to ask you, how do you feel that the industry here in Atlanta has changed in the last 20 years? Wow. That's a great question. Um, there is still a business here. 
uh, on the music side. Of course, film has really taken off. Right. Um, when LaFace, when LA and Babyface decided to sell the company, um, I think that kind of hurt the Atlanta music scene for a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, because LA and Babyface were check writers. You know, they opened the doors and provided opportunity not only for the artists to get signed, you know, to a boutique slash major label, but, you know, for the producers, you know, yeah. whether it was Jermaine or Dallas or, you know, Rico and Organized, Shakespeare, you know, those yeah, guys, lot of, lot of you know, got their opportunities, right. you know, from LA Reed and particularly, you know, Pebbles, um, who had Savvy Records, mm -hmm. you know, prior to that. And so I think it put a dent in the industry. And then I would, probably say also in the last, I don't know, KP, maybe five to seven years, a lot of the writers and the creative community have moved to LA. So right. it's yeah. changed a lot. And I think we have like this false sense of celebrity here too. <laughs> I hate to say that y'all, yeah. but everybody is balling on a budget. And right. you know, I'm a realist, yeah. right? You know, I quit my job and walked away. And you know, I don't have to buy, not that I have to, I can't buy the $3,000 handbags that mm -hmm. I used to, but I, the difference is I'm not fronting like I'm doing right, that. Right, you know right. what I mean? I'm keeping it real. I let you guys know the changes that I've made in my career, but everybody want to, you know, stunt until they make it here, mm -hmm. fake it till they make mm -hmm. it. And I just hate that that culture is here now, but mm -hmm. there is still music here mm -hmm. and there's still work to be done, but you still just have to be about your business. I, I think And too. I think that, Lynn, I just want to add, I think, unfortunately, the reality show culture yes, has yes, added that yes, because, that whole, yeah. and, and, I, and a lot of those women <laughs> and men are my friends and I'm yeah. not being a hypocrite, but I think it's, you know, created this false sense of celebrity here. Mm -hmm in the marketplace and so I just want to make sure that we keep all that in perspective yeah um, I do know that like even on the film side there's a 30 percent tax um, credit that producers get to film here and I know they're trying to get the music credit as well so right. it still happens here I have a, an event called ATL Live on the Park yes yeah, so it's been that. going on for <laughs> five years so yes, you know that's yeah. going on a lot and you know Atlanta is like the hip hop city. Right. You know? So if you want to, you know, break your record, you got to come here and break out of V or hot. Yeah. So let's talk about your books. Okay. Please, please, please. Yes. So tell us about it. Please. Okay. So uh, the hip hop professional I yes. uh, actually wrote in 2010. Okay. And it's a woman's guide to climbing the ladder of success in the entertainment Love the business. Title. Love it. Thank you very much. Uh, wrote it one night. I was going to speak at Princeton, and my friend was like, "You need to write a book." You know, I was like, I can't write a book. What are you talking about? And literally that night before, I just started writing from like 8 p.m. to 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Got on. If anybody ever been to Princeton, it's like planes, trains, automobiles. So I got on the plane, hadn't slept at all, wrote on the plane, got on the train and wrote. And I met Dr. Cornell West, mm. who was actually at the event that I was speaking at because he was a professor then at yeah. Princeton. And I was like, excuse me, Dr. West, after the panel, I was like, do you mind if I read you some of my books? He was so gracious and he um, read the first five that's chapters awesome. and that's why he was actually um, gave me a quote on the cover of the first version of the book. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I sold a co couple copies when I first released it, but I was still transitioning and right. trying to figure out my place right. and the next steps of my journey right. of being an entrepreneur. So I didn't do as much as I could have to mm -hmm. promote it. Mm -hmm. So last year I was like, okay, girl, you did not milk that hip hop <laughs> professional for all you could. I know you want to get out here and share with this young generation. so. You know, I prayed about it and figured it out, and, and guys, you got to have a plan, okay? Yes. And it's okay. And I didn't look at my first release of that book as a fail plan. It just was something I needed to kind of, like, go in and retool and figure out what I was going to do. So you always have to have a plan and a strategy. So mm -hmm. I created a new strategy, and I felt like I'm going to really create this whole hip-hop professional brand. Because right. the brand name, you know, is Shanti Das, but my brand is, is being known for empowerment and trying to inspire the young women and men that are coming up in this culture. So I rebranded, I changed the size of the book, I added seven new chapters, and I put it back out there. And, you know, I'm excited I've to say, like, you know, I participated in Essence Festival. Um, you know, I do a lot for the National Urban League. Uh, I've been speaking in all these colleges. I launched a college tour mm -hmm. called the College Chat Room. I just did a um, talk at Kennesaw State, That's cool. Fort Hayes, Syracuse, um, FAMU. This is so cool and humbling. FAMU, the students there just created a Twitter page saying, we want the hip hop professionals. So God is good. God you know, things good. are starting to happen. And I'm just trying to share my talents with this young generation and give back as much as I can. And like, if you email me, like, I'm going to email you back. Right. You know, it, it's hard trying to find mentors and I'm not going to sit here and say, I can like chop it up with you 24 yeah. seven, but I really am genuinely out here trying to help. And so these books, you know, 
It's exciting. And the second one is the one, two, threes of networking. Yes. It's just a pocket guide of 30 networking tips. Well, we need that. We I was so scared back we in the day that. trying to network. I didn't want yeah. to go up and I didn't know what that elevator pitch was. Yeah. If I met an Ishii in the elevator, <laughs> what would I say? Right. And so I talked to them, you know, about not being afraid and understanding that, you know, you can start networking within your family, within your community, you know, at community services, you need mm-hmm. really unique people. And you never know how you're passing across. This again. is and true. So you got to get out there and help meet somebody like, you know, 20 years from now and then they can help you with something. I think it was Ace Hood, closed mouth, closed mouth, don't get fed on the boulevard. That's the and truth. that's so true. Like that's the truth. truth. You got to get that's out there true. and let people know you're hungry that's and you're ready true. to eat. You're right. I was very um, surprised you do, you have an organization. Um, it's a nonprofit. May we rest in peace? Well, actually, um, I wish it was a nonprofit, but okay. it's an initiative that I did. Okay. Um, so I started that in 2009, and it was when I was in my transition year. Okay. I think that whole year God was talking to me, and yeah. I just, I, I, it's funny, and I, not to get all spiritual on y'all, but, but I do profess my love for God, and I listen to him talk to me now. So 2009 was a tough year for me. My uncle died. He was like my dad that raised me. Um, my mom's Alzheimer's was getting worse. Um, I was just dealing with a hostile environment, a working environment. Um, so it was all these things just kind of constantly coming at me. And so I was sitting at work one night, and I, you know, used to surf after hours on certain websites right. that I like. So um, I do like to keep up with what's going on in the economy. And so I was surfing CNNMoney.com. Okay. And so I saw um, an online article about Detroit and how broke the city was. And uh, it really, like, hit me. Like, I'm not lying, y'all. Like, there were people, dead bodies, not to be morbid, but stacked up in the morgue like shoes or bags in my closet. But the families were too broke to bury their loved ones. And I was like, okay, really? Like, I'm worried about what I'm going to go home and eat or, you know, what I'm doing and packing on this trip. And these people can't even bury like their moms or their uncles or their sisters. And so I sat, I sat down and wrote like a heartfelt letter to all of my friends and colleagues in the business the next day. I actually opened like my little P.O. box and in six weeks I raised six thousand dollars awesome. and I buried 30 people and then I was like okay I got to take this one step further and uh, seeing is that they would keep up with what I was doing and I sent an email to the record company um, oh gosh uh, Kid Rock sorry okay. for Kid Rock and uh, I thought they would just forward it on to like his manager or right. product manager or something and he called my cell phone he's like yo Shanti Kid Rock here and I said, <laughs> Kid Rock is really calling me. So he donated $5,000 and then Buster Rhymes donated and then Akon. I ended up raising $30,000 and we buried 30 people in Detroit. So are you still doing that? I'm Moving? actually about to start okay. that back up. But okay. what I like to do is because, and that's the one thing I'll say to you guys who's interested in service and nonprofit too, like it sounds sexy nowadays to say you have your own nonprofit, but if you got to do it, do it right because that's a business also. It's a non-for-profit, yes. but it's still a business. A lot of hard work. And so you need to have a board, and you need to properly put it together. So until I can do that, which I will have my right. own nonprofit, I just focus on small community efforts that impact a mm-hmm. specific group of people. Right. So I, I do, um, this is my third year doing an initiative called No Reservations Needed. Mm-hmm. V103 has been my partner since we started. Teddy Riley partnered with me the first year. Young Jeezy sat with me last year. Teddy's back on board now. Uh, we have a food drive on November 22nd. If anybody wants to come to Walmart, we're getting food on MLK right over here. What day is this again? November 22nd, November Saturday 22nd. from 12 okay. to 4. So okay. it's right in the oh, AUC area. Write that down. Area. Write that down. <laughs> and then Tuesday, we feed over 500 men at the mission. And so I'm doing that. I do a back to school drive. I partner with the Genesis Shelter to help the homeless moms. So I thought, you know, these are moms that were once homeless and have these newborn babies. And mm-hmm. so they're in a six month program there. So I get my makeup artists and hair stylists to pay for them. Yes, so I'm doing my fourth one in December. Um, I do a toy drive with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Just a bunch of well, stuff. Well, that's good. Feeling profit for I'm not It's not all about that's giving it. back. That's right. It those, is. You know, and you don't want to give to receive, but. You know, those blessings, they come back. And what you put in the universe, it comes back. Yeah. Totally. I have, um, I wanted to ask you, um, what do you, what would be your advice to an artist right now that's trying to come out in this social media world from a marketing promotion standpoint? What would, what would be your advice? Just 
you know, find ways to stand out above the rest. I know that's simple, you know, find where their voice, you know, if there are a lot of one type of singers, you know, in your area or, you know, on, you know, whatever socials that you follow, you know, try to do something different, you know, make your voice unique and creative. I mean, when you look at artists like Adele, you know, not saying, I don't think she <coughs> broke out of social media, but like, she's so unique in her craft. Right. And I, 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 um, I put a lot of inspirational stuff on Instagram every day and different posts and stuff. Y'all follow her? <laughs> Thank you. Good. So I was saying earlier, I was like, you know, stop trying to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. Be your best authentic self, mm -hmm. you know, and let that shine through. Whether it's in your posts, you know, if, if you can really, really sing, you know, do covers of other artists and just keep, you know, getting yourself out there. But like, and also be careful with how you use social media, right? Yes. Because Definitely. people look, even if you're an artist, like if you're an artist trying to perform on my show, you know, if you got like these naked pictures and you're always swearing on social media, like I don't really want to mm -hmm. like work with you and be mm -hmm. down with you. And it might get you a bunch of likes. And I think that's something we got to really be careful of, right? I think we get so caught up. Caught up. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Like sometimes I find myself at dinner and I have to like put the phone away. Mm -hmm. You post something and you're like, okay, did, did it resonate or people, but you know, damn, I'm a like sometimes, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I still got to live for me and be That's confident right. Right. in it, the music right. that I'm putting out if I'm an artist right. or what I'm doing as a marketer. So right. like, don't get so caught up either because social media can like play games with your right. mind. Definitely. So definitely. you got to know if definitely. your craft, if you're really yeah. talented or not and go back to the old school, yeah. go sing for your friends, yeah. let your mom, yeah. you know, your cousins, uh -huh. if they tell you like, mm, I don't know, you might need to <laughs> go to medical school. Like, like, and don't be afraid to take construction. The criticism. I think that's that's important. I think that um, we come from a school you had to really pay your dues, For like real? really, really grind. And I, you I, had to I, sing in the talent show. Yes, and if you get yes. booed at the talent oh, show, oh, totally. Yeah, we got booed at our not house. Get a record deal. <laughs> <laughs> Please, job. So, like, real talk. And I think that um, that you have to know that grind. Absolutely. You got to know that side because if you come in and they're looking at now, oh, I put a couple of videos up and I get 100,000 views and I'm, I'm in. No, you know, no. because you're going to have to come. You still got to you know, work the marketplace. You got to work. You got to work. And I think now as a people, we have a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think that needs to change, but mm -hmm. that's, everything is so microwave now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I want to talk to you about instead of add water, you gotta add <laughs> talent. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, the ATL rise—that was the, the hashtag oh. of it. Um, uh -huh. What did you think about it? Did you think that it, the whole? Did, did y'all see that the untold story at VH1, of, um, ATL, the rise of music here and all that stuff? Uh, Shanti was on there. Did y'all see Shanti? Yes, and. Um, I thought it was really cool. Of course, it was so much that was left out because you only can do so much in an hour. I know. Some people but, felt the way about that, but it's only yeah. so much you can say. I think they should do another part to it. I totally. Think <laughs> I think they yeah. should do another part. But what did you think about it? Like, do you feel, at the end of the day, did you feel satisfied when you watched it? I was. Okay. I thought it was a good representation yeah. of our history. What I liked also is that it kind of went back and talked about um, just the fabric of the city yes. and kind of what we yes. were going through, yeah. you know, whether it was the Wayne William murders. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a scary time for everybody. It and was. some artists, you know, use music as an outlet yeah. to kind of escape from all that that was going on. And obviously um, the rich history, that w the role that the city played in the civil rights movement and that sort of right. thing. So I really appreciated um, that aspect of mm -hmm. it. And then as far as the music, I thought it was spot on. You know, mm -hmm. was uh, Atlanta, you know, I heard some artists saying like there was a, you know, and DJ's talking about, you know, there was an Atlanta scene before Outkast. Yeah, but Outkast put us on the map globally. Mm -hmm. You know, say what you want, you know. There were the Shadis here and the Rahims, and I loved all of those guys. You know, it was booty shake music or bass music, whatever you wanted to call it. And yes, there was a music culture here, and there were a lot of people that contributed to that. Right. But you can't take away the fact that, you know, well, if you want to be, you know, truthfully, truth be told, it was crisscross, you know, who broke that barrier. But then when you talk about, you know, just hip hop and all of its sensibilities, you mm -hmm. know, Outkast really put us on the map right, for that. Right, and right. So, no, yeah. I thought it was pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have any issues with it. I enjoy watching it and just, I mean, like seeing Edward J and oh, God. <laughs> all the stuff from back in the day. I'm still searching for Edward J. 
Jay mixtape. <laughs> oh, I, I still have mine. And I asked him, I asked Edward J himself, and he's like, I don't even have any. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. But yeah, they, they were able yes. to capture, I think, a it, lot it of was, people. Was, DJ Jelly, you know, all yeah. the guys that it contributed. It was beautiful. So. It was beautiful. I remember working with Nabs back in the day with the rest of the development, you know, and a lot of people was like, they from Tennessee, you know, but I'm, you know, no one knew that and I was you guys, y'all give it up for what each did to the culture. Like, a rest of development, you guys broke barriers for us. Absolutely. But it was, nobody thought we were from, you know, they was like, they ain't from here. Right. I'm from here, but nobody else in the group originally from here. And it was hip hop too, because they think, no, it wasn't, but it was. Right. That's what, yeah, but but it's all good. I feel like we pioneered. Um, groups like Goody Mob and Outkast that I feel like we pioneered that that you know yeah, for them to come out and do that thing. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all good. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you: Do you feel like it's still a camaraderie here in ATL, like with the artists and you know everybody in the music industry? Do you feel like it, like how it was back in the twenty years ago? Um, I think so to a certain degree. I think there's a level of respect. You yeah. know, I just heard the other day that T.I. and Jeezy's about to do an album oh, together. Oh, that's cool. Okay. You know, and so, and, and I can just say, like, at the Outkast concert, you know, it felt like a reunion. Mm-hmm. You know, so many people supported those guys. Unfortunately, and just, I didn't get to go. Girl. Mm, <laughs> I hate it. I, I'm I hate sorry. It. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. How many people went? <laughs> I did. <laughs> what That's I'll say awesome. about Atlanta too, even I think the people that work here, a lot of the people that are in the entertainment business now that still work for labels in the Atlanta community, you know, they all support each other and yeah. hang out. It's haters everywhere. Right. You know, um, so from what I can see, um, it is, it's but you know, I pretty much mind my business. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't be out yeah. talking to everybody. Like yeah. if it don't really involve me, mm, yeah. I'm not, you know, I got you. but when I can, you know, call on these people, they're there to support right. and right. I see them doing stuff together. Right. So, okay. Wonderful. Um, last thing, what are you doing now? What's next? What's, what is Shanti going to do? Uh, <laughs> what is Shanti going to do? Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, Sometimes I feel like I'm like a crazy fine artist, you know, Mm -hmm. how you're trying to figure out what you're going to draw and paint next. So I think the next canvas for my life um, would be continuing what I'm doing to inspire this young generation. Um, I'm like the little engine that could. Like, I'm not going to give up on this promo tour. I'm in talks with some sponsors now. You know, some of the schools have budgets, some don't. But to me, when somebody tells you no, it's just you got to find another route to yes. That's right. And That's so right. I am going to continue with my college tour. Um, I'm actually writing a book about um, that'll be like a journal book about my experiences. A daughter having a mom living with Alzheimer's. And I'm going to donate all, it's going to be an ebook that's going to come out in February. I'm going to donate all the proceeds to the Alzheimer's Association. Wonderful. I'm working on another book. I had a conference call today with a big publisher. Oh, that's why I decided to self-publish because it's so much politics and red yeah. tape, but I may end up doing that. Um, and actually, I love radio. Two years ago, I co-hosted a Chris show Weber, with right? Chris Weber, yeah. yes, on Sirius Satellite. It was a music and sports talk mm-hmm. show. So you might see some radio stuff in my future. That's good. Um, kind of going back to my degree, that's that right. degree, <laughs> the right, young lady right, right. asked, you know, because right. radio was and my you major. you some consulting for some yeah. folks, you know what I mean? Exactly. And I'm still doing some independent yeah. music consulting, um, more so the... the um, the older established acts like right. I'm doing the marketing for the new Johnny Gill album great. Big, oh, wow. big new edition fan so yeah, it's been a too. pleasure working with Johnny um, and then continuing my efforts to serve my co- community good 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 so. well many blessings thank on you. your journey Shanti thank you and, and thank, thank you I'm thank so you. proud of you thank you uh, well y'all whole, please you know, support Shanti everything. and everything she's doing thank how you. many people got her book anybody oh let's see so wait, I see that? Where, are the, I that? where are the giveaways <laughs> thank you this is her book y'all Please support her. We got to support each other, y'all. Real talk. We really, really, so, really So um, who remembers where I went to elementary school? <laughs> she had her hand up. You can get a copy of the book. John. Here you go, sis. Thank you so much. And then, uh, let's see, where was my first job in the rec- what record company? Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. She gets the book bag. I have, uh, so I'm doing my own merchandise, too. I have my hip-hop professional logo. Right here, she gets and the she book, and this young lady in the red yeah. gets the backpack. And let's see, what last question? Um, what's the name of my showcase? What's the full name? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you again. Yes. Yes. You were, you were, behind, you had something to do with that. A little bit to do with that. A lot of it. 
<laughs> Slightly, yeah. So, yeah. I remember when uh, you brought him to the face. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Um, talk about that and T.I. now. Now. T.I. now is, is the tip that I met. Yeah. Like, he's literally not... He's one of the most consistent, loyal friends that I have. He's actually a really good person. Yeah, he's he a great a quality person. He really is. You know, and he, you know, even when he does stuff that's not so, you know, great to other people, he at least accepts his part in everything he does. He's very genuine. Yes, he's genuine. Extreme. So it's like, you know, the conversations are they're hilarious. Yeah. Because, you know, you'll catch an eight-syllable word every now and again. <laughs>